So a few years ago, I found myself in a place I considered happy. I had finally arrived here after years of hard work and struggles. I was living in New York City, engaged to a wonderful man, and I had a career in journalism. And I had also found a practice, yoga, that had helped heal my anxiety. But leave it to my sister to burst my bubble as her words of warning came to me. She said, life is bittersweet. Enjoy the good moments. And I remember thinking, what is she talking about? My life is working, finally. It's going to be smooth here on out. But unfortunately, that was not the case. And my happiness was going to be tested. I got a call from my mother, and she told me, I have something to tell you. Her voice sounded different. She said, I have cancer, terminal breast cancer. My mind went blank. My heart started racing. And I said, how can this be? My mom is 57 years old. This is supposed to happen to people when they're older, not now. But it was my acceptance. This is what I had to do was accept it. So in that moment, I stayed strong with my mom on the phone. But as soon as I hung up, I started crying. And those words of warning that my sister had told me just a few weeks prior was coming to fruition. And what I realized is that I needed to accept this. And the only way that I could accept my new reality was that I had to look at what I did have. And what I did have was time with my mom. So in accepting the new reality, we, me, my sisters, and I decided to spend a week at a time with my mother. We would go for walks, we would talk, watch old movies. And in that time, we just had a very special time to connect. And the week that I was with her, I told my mom, I am always here for you, but at, during that week, I need to go upstairs and do a yoga practice. So I would go upstairs, and I would light a candle and turn on some entrancing music. And there, in that moment, I would find solace. I would find peace from my chattering mind. So what I found was, if I could find a place of peace and accept my new reality, that would be the start of my way back towards happiness. And then my mom passed, unfortunately. And I was very lost, and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I thought, maybe I should turn to this one thing that was bringing me peace, yoga. So I took off, and I went to India, and I was looking for answers. The first person that I came to was a guru. And I asked him, how do I find answers to heal this heavy feeling in my heart? And he said, well, no one can solve your problem. Only you can solve it. But people can guide you on how to solve the problem. And I thought, wow, I came all the way to India to hear this. I flew 22 hours. This I could have read in some popular psychology book. I wanted some sort of magic meditation or century old chant, but this was my information that he was giving me. So I decided what he said was true, that we have to go within. And only when we go within can we hear answers. We can look outside of ourselves for happiness, but that's never going to be, be the path. It's only when we look within that we'll find our answers to our truth. And so the next person that I went to see was another guru. And he led me down this path of baby cows and cow dung everywhere, little cows swarming all around. And I thought, wait a second, this is kind of a little bit precarious. But Suzanne, let go. Be in the moment, just accept what it is, even if it means your feet stepping in cow dung. This is part of some grander plan, just let go. So we sat down, we started joking around about my trip to India, and he asked me if I was looking for a guru. And I said, well, I'm in the guru market. We laughed about that. And then he said, I have to tell you that the answers that you're coming all the way to India to hear, you're not going to find because your mind is too restless. And it is only when you go within that you can find the answers. And I thought, OK, I just heard this a few minutes ago. He suggested for me to go to the temple and meditate. So meditate, go within. Clearly, that was my answer. But I was looking for some larger fix. So I followed my friends into the temple. We sat down, and we started to chant. And as I closed my eyes, I started to feel this lifting of heaviness from my heart. I started to feel a transformation. And the more we were chanting these words, the deeper of a place of meditation that I was going into. And I realized that we can always find the light in the darkest moments of our life. 
When I was there in the temple, I started connecting to the people around me and to this universal energy that, is it, that exists everywhere. And so the word yoga means to unite, to bring together. So in this theme of togetherness here today, what I realize is that we are all one. We are never alone. We never face our dark moments alone. And if we can look at the dark moments in our life as a teacher to take us to a more empowered self, then we're never going to be afraid of the darkness. So we need anchors in life. And so for me, my anchor is yoga and meditation, that no matter what's happening in my life, that I have a tool to access strength and balance. And the tool, the anchor, is the most important place because that's the doorway where we can connect to acceptance. We can go within and we can feel connection. So I would like to invite all of you today to find your anchor because if you find an anchor, then no matter what happens in your life, you will have this tool that you can ground yourself and accept anything that comes in your path. So again, the key to happiness is in acceptance. Going within, connection, and find your anchor. Thank you, and Namaste.